Bending. Hello and welcome to Happy Bending. I'm Bill and today we are going to be doing a video on how to switch a soda machine from cans to bottles. Now this is a question I've gotten many requests for and the only reason I haven't made a video about it is because I had no reason to really do it. My machines are set up the way I want them to. They're either vending cans or they're vending bottles and I had no reason to switch them. And most of the videos I've done, I've done on topics that I had to do at that time. I was either switching the price or replacing a pro um, part that was bad. So this is the first time I'm doing something just because I've gotten some requests on how to do it. And since I'm taking my own time to do this, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, uh, slam that like button, because in order for me to start making money from these videos, I have to get a thousand subscribers. And in order for that to happen, the more you like the videos, the more the videos will appear on other people's suggested viewing pages, and that will get me more subscribers. So give me a hand, subscribe, I get to a thousand subscribers I'll explain to you my whole story in vending and actually I am NOT a full-time vendor I have another job that I do and this is just a, a part-time thing for me so I'll explain how I got into vending but uh, yeah I really need to hit that thousand subscribers so what we're doing today is uh, we have a Royal G3 machine this is a nine selection machine uh, it's a pretty common machine. This is the machine that the Coke bottlers put out. Um, very common, you see them everywhere. However, if you have a Dixie Narco machine, or even if you have a Royal 650, a Merlin 4 machine, they are going to be very different as far as how you set them up uh, compared to this machine. And, Maybe in the future I'll do one on the Dixie Narco showing how you switch from uh, cans to bottles or bottles to cans on that because it is very different. So uh, here are some different products you have. Here's your, your typical can. This machine, if you look at it, has mostly cans except the um, eighth selection is bottled iced tea and then the ninth selection is bottled water. So when you're putting cans in a machine like this, you're able to put two cans per column stacked like this, and they alternate. One can drops, and then the next van, the other can drops back and forth. Now bottles are taller. So in a machine like this, it has 12 columns inside, you only can fit one product per column. One bottle per column all stacked on each other. So you have to do an internal menu setting in there so that it knows whether there's two products stacked together like this, like cans, or there's one product stacked up there like bottles. And then also it's a matter of the thickness of the product. So most 16 and a half or 16 ounce bottles are the same or approximately the same diameter as the cans. So the product stop in the machine can be left at the narrow setting. It would be the same setting for these. Now, however, if you're going to vend a 20 ounce bottle like this, and most of the, the bottles that you get from your bottlers for vending are 20 ounce, they are going to be wider than your typical can or your 16 ounce bottle like you see and if you're vending products like this that's when you have to adjust the product stop in the machine to be in the wider setting to allow for the machine to drop this without it getting jammed so before we get started I'm going to want to show you a couple things underneath and the way this machine vends but uh, it's a little noisy with the compressor on so I'm going to unplug the machine you don't have to unplug the machine to switch from bottles to cans but just for this part while I show you, I'm going to do it just so it gets a little more quiet. So this is the way a G3 machine looks like underneath and this is the way it vends. Unlike your Dixie Narcos or even your Merlin 4 machines, it doesn't have a motor for each individual column. This machine has 12 columns in here and it has one motor right over here. This is the motor 
and that vends all 12 columns. And attached to it, you have a chain, and then you also have a sensor so that it knows where the chain is. And you have this little grab here that grabs on to these little white pieces for each individual column, and it pulls them. It goes in front of it, and then it pulls it back. And then that spins this pivot piece right here and then makes the products drop down. Now these things are what are called the product stops. You have a long product stop on each column and then a short product stop on each column. And each uh, one of these product stops has two settings, a narrow setting and a wide setting. Now right now every one of these is set to the narrow setting and the narrow setting is the second hole in it. This is the wide setting. When you put this rod in the wide setting, it makes this come out further for wider products. Right now it's in the narrow setting. Now the reason you have a short product stop and a long product stop is that when you have products that are too deep, like these cans, the long product stop will stop a can from dropping down after the can drops down from the short product stop. So that way you can have too deep. It is holding this can, it just dropped the short product stop can and then the long product stop can is, is waiting there for the second VEN. And this machine has a drop sensor right here on the product chute so that when a can drops and, it, and the machine hears, feels that vibration, it doesn't have the chain pull again. If it pulls on that and doesn't feel a vibration, it, it assumes that it didn't vend a product and then it pulls on that little white lever a second time and then uh, a can should come down. If it does it a second time, it will pull it one more time and then if it pulls it one more time and nothing falls, it assumes the product is sold out and then you'll get the sold out display on the machine. So we have 12 columns in here, six in the back and then these six in the front. Now to adjust these product stops, I have to pull out the rod from the front. And when I pull that out, I'm going to change the, these root beers. I'm going to put uh, bottles in place of these these two mug root beers but since that's in the front and I'm going to be pulling out this rod it's also going to pull it out from this back which is a ginger ale so before I can do anything I have to empty out these uh, ginger ale cans as well as the root beer cans all right so it's selection four here are the root beers that I will be replacing luckily they're not really that full so we're just going to pull all these out all these root beers out. <clears throat> if there's one hanging low, you'd have to pull it out from underneath. But I was able to get them all out. Now in the back of that, behind that, is my ginger ale. Now that has to just temporarily be pulled out until I readjust the product stops. Now to do this, you have to actually take off this little guard that stops the pins from coming out. And this just simply lifts up and then comes off. And then this will expose all your rods that can be pulled out to replace different parts. Now you want to make sure you're pulling out the correct rod because otherwise all the parts could just simply fall down and then you'll have to put all the parts back in the correct order and that can be a real hassle. The one that you want to move to adjust the product stop, at least on this column, which is column four and 10, is this one right here. And as I pull that rod out, you can see it coming out of the far columns product stop, the long product stop, and eventually I'm gonna be completely out of it and then there it is hanging free. Now if I were just changing this back column I would just have to pull this rod out until it 
is out of both the short and the long product stop for that back comm. I wouldn't have to pull it out any further, which w would then wouldn't mess up this, this column, the fourth column. But this column in the back, I'm going to stay, keep the same, and I'm going to adjust this column. Now that is why I had to pull out all the product out of both of those two columns. So I'm going to pull out this rod. You see the rod coming out. I'm going to pull this rod out a little further now. And then you're going to see it go off of the short product stop for the front column, column four. There it goes. And then it's going to come off of the long product stop. There we go. So I'm not going to pull out the rod completely. Now I'm going to get it lined up where it needs to be and then push it back in. Now the rod, I'm, I'm putting it in the inside slot on the long product stop for the front column. I'm pushing it forward and then it's coming up to the short product stop on column four. And I'm just lining that right up there. If you see that going in, it's a little hard to get a uh, video under here. And then I'm going to push it back into column 10, and I'm going to set that back up for uh, a short or a, a narrow product stop. So I'm putting it in the outside opening where it already was before, and then the long product stop in column 10 I am also putting that in the outside opening and then push it all the way into the opening at the back of the machine so that your rod sits flush like this. Now you see this rod is up a little bit. There really isn't a reason for that to be up a little bit. Might want to hit that in. There we go. Yeah, they should all be pretty much flush. But these rods are how you replace different parts in your machine. Or these bottom ones are how you adjust the product stops, either to be narrow or wide. So now I'm going to put the rod stop back on. This just sits in here like this, comes up onto these little tabs, and then pushes down. That's just to stop somebody from accidentally pulling out a rod and then messing up the whole machine. And now I'm going to load my products in. You should always load in the rear columns first. So I'm going to put my ginger ale back in. I'm not going to fill it up completely because after I'm done this demonstration, I'm going to have to set this back for those ginger rails because I'm not going to leave these power aids in this machine. Once again, this is just a demonstration show people how to do this I might need to do this at home so since I'm doing this I remember hit that subscribe button slam on that like thumbs up you know ring that notification bell all that jazz let's get up to a thousand subscribers hey if I hit 2,000 subscribers I'll uh, introduce you to my wife and uh, she can tell you how much she likes vending. Now I'm going to throw in some of these power aids. Uh, you got to rip these things open. These are a pain to get out of these containers. Sometimes they don't rip out real nice. You're struggling getting these things out. Of course, if you get a case of 24 of them, they're a little easier to vend. Now here is something else important that I didn't mention. You have product stops that need to be adjusted for the height of the product. Now in the front columns, these are the product stops. They lift up and they can be moved in or out. Now I have these set all the way out, which is where you want them to be for cans that are two product deep. Now this might not be the proper setting though for this bottle, so I have to put a couple in and see. And yeah, it's nowhere near correct for the bottle. The bottle goes way back further than the cans which are um, stacked on top of each other. So these guys, these little product stops, 
will have to be put back. To adjust these, you just lift them up, and then there's a bunch of notches along the sides of the columns. And you want to get it back so that it's not too snug on the product, but it stops the product from inching forward. And you want them level. And to keep them level, there's little holes every so many slots so that you can figure out, OK, it's one from the hole, or I'm doing it right at the hole, so that you, you get the, the product guide the same on the top and the bottom. So on this one, I'm going to put it in at the second hole, and you can sort of see where that notch came down. And I'm on the same in the top and the bottom. And you have both a left and right product stop here. So you want to set both of them at the same spot. There we go. I'll give that a try. If I feel it's too tight on the product, I'll move it back a notch. So when you're putting these bottles in, the front columns, the bottle caps come toward you. If I were putting the bottles in the rear column, like this column here with these iced teas, the bottle caps go toward the back. And then also, if I had to adjust the product stops in the back, it's these back guides, you put your two fingers in, it pulls the tabs together, and then you pull them forward so that you don't have a lot of play. You can see the ones that have the cans went all the way back. The one here with the bottle, that's more forward because I, um, you want about a half inch of play in that column for the bottle to have a little play, but not too much play that it's going to be causing a jam because they're not going to stack up ne neatly. You want the bottles stacking up neatly on top of each other. I'm just going to put two more bottles in here. So you can see where the product stops are here in relation to the caps. Uh, it's a little bit of play, but it's going to keep these bottles pretty well in place. I'm happy with that. If you're finding that the bottles are not staying stacked as they drop down. You might want to adjust these little product stops, but I'm pretty sure this is going to work fine for me. Now, before we test this, there is one more setting. This column is still set for products too deep. And if I leave it set for products too deep when it only has products one deep, the machine is not going to bend properly. It's going to be pulling on the tabs for products too deep and then you're going to start getting double vends or every other vend is not going to vend the product and um, you'll have the machine thinking it's sold out when it's not so we have to go into the menu and adjust that I'm gonna plug the machine back in to get into the menu on these G3 machines you gotta press the programming button this is an older board. It has the big red programming button. The newer boards, it's a little blue button up here at the top. But you just press that once, and then you come to the front. You should see error, which is the first menu that you have. And then you're going to navigate up with the second button. Now, to get into a lot of the other additional menus, you have to put the password into the machine. So you're going to navigate up until you see password. The default password on these Royal machines is 4231. So you press the fourth button, the second, the third, the first, and then press four for enter. And then it's going to take you to cash, which is the first menu once you put in the password. Navigate through these, you press the second button, it's going to take you up through the different menus sale, price, figure. Some of these, I don't even know what they do. I haven't even gone into them. That's your time settings. The lights, refrigeration. I'm looking for set depth. There it is. That stands for set the depth of each column. Now here's where a lot of vendors make a mistake. They think you're setting the depth 
for columns. So they'll say, oh, well, I need to set the depth, and then we're working right now with column four. I need to set the depth for column four, so they'll go into number four and set the depth to one. That's not the way set the depth works. It sets depth per selection, not by column. And let me repeat this, because this is a mistake many people make. I made the same mistake when I started programming, programming these machines. It sets depth per selection, not for column. And if we look here, my root beer happens to be selection four. And that just by chance lines up to the column that that product was in, which is fourth. Four column and it's four selection. However, depending on how you have your, your um, space to sale set, your selection button might not line up with the column that's vending that product. So set depth, I'm gonna go into it by pressing the fourth button, which is enter, and then it's gonna say 01, which means selection one, not column one. Selection one is set for two deep, which is correct, it was cans. Selection two is set for two deep, it's cans. Selection three is set for two deep, cans. Selection four was set for two deep, which was fine because it was the root beer, it was cans, but now I have Powerades in there, which are one deep. So I'm gonna press enter, the two is going to blink, and I'm gonna change that to a one because that means now one deep. I'm setting selection four for one deep. I'm gonna press the fourth button to enter that, and now I can get out of this menu by pressing the first button, press out of it again. Well, to get out of it again, I would go to return and then press enter and then it gets out of that menu. But once I uh, pressed enter on that setting, it set it and now I can close the door. Now just to um, not create any confusion, I'm gonna pull out the flavor strip. I don't have one for Powerade, but we'll just make it white so that you know this is the one that I set for the Powerade 20 ounce bottles. All right, let's close up the vendor. I grabbed a couple dollars to test this. <clears throat> I didn't change the price of this. Now, if I were putting 20 ounce bottles in here, I would start at least at $1.50 a bottle. All these cans are set for 75 cents, so that selection is still set for 75 cents. I wouldn't be making any money if I were selling a 20 ounce bottle at 75 cents. So this is just for demonstration purposes only. You see as I press that, it still says 75 cents. So let's try vending that, see what it does. So okay, let's press this fourth one. It takes in the money, and boom, vended it. Gave me my change, and it only vended one product, but let's try it again. Let's just confirm that it's going to vend consistently and vend it again. And there we go. Got one product, got our quarter change. It's not vending double products. It uh, is vending correctly, but just to make sure that ginger ale, which was in the column behind it, it still vends correctly, I'm going to put a dollar in and vend from that because, you know, we were reloading that after we adjusted the product stops. And there we go. Now, if you were going to then convert from bottles, 20 ounce bottles, to cans, which I'm going to have to do to put these uh, root beer back in, you're just going to do those steps in reverse. You're going to change the product depth from one back to two. You're going to um, have to change your product stops back to the narrow position from the wide position, and then also the front stops or the back stop for the column, adjust that for your cans, for your two deep cans. So it's just the same process in reverse. Well, hopefully you learned something, and as always, happy vending.